Welcome back to our channel. Um, what I'd like to share with you today is kind of a little bit of a testimony. Um, I had an experience once, the last nursing job that I had, the last hospital nursing job that I had, <clears throat> I worked for a, a little while on a med search floor and a little while in a newborn nursery. And when I was on the med search floor, I had a patient come in one day, very pleasant African-American lady, very sweet, nice lady, just calm and pleasant. And uh, whenever, <clears throat> excuse me, I received her from the emergency room, <coughs> actually I think she came directly from the doctor's office, um, I asked her what her problem was when I was doing the interview and physical assessment and everything, and she said chest pain. No symptoms, no sweating, nothing. And I asked her, um, well, if you could rate your pain on a scale of 1 to 10, all you who are nurses, you know what I'm talking about, on a scale of 1 to 10, 0 being no pain and 10 being severe pain, where would you rate it? And she said, a 10. And I thought, yeah, right. Well, about that time, um, her doctor burst through the, the room, the door, into the room, yelling at me, get her to ICU right away, she's having an MI. And I was dumbfounded, I was totally dumbfounded. And so needless to say, I got an overdrive and I, I got the lady transferred to ICU very quickly. <coughs> and they say what goes around comes around. And uh, so, um, I want to share with you an experience that I've had here over the last, I guess, six weeks or close to two months now, I guess. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll try to be as detailed as possible, but cut to the chase, too. Um, my cat scratched me, uh, I guess, it, well, I don't know, it was sometime in, in August. And uh, she's a very friendly cat. And she was rubbing on my legs and wanting me to pet her and stuff. So a lot of times I would just reach down and kind of pick her front end up with one hand and scratch behind her ears with the other. Well, when I did that this time, something scared her. And the same time I reached to pick her up and scratch her, she saw whatever it was that frightened her. And she scratched my hand right here very deep. Um, it really surprised me because she's so friendly. And she's never done anything like that before. And so, uh, needless to say, I, you know, being a nurse, I went in, made it bleed, you know, irrigate it with my natural fluids. And then I washed it really well with uh, doTERRA On Guard soap, which I really enjoy. And then I made a mistake. I put pine sap on it. And uh, pine sap is excellent for wounds. It's super, it's like nature's sutures. But I no longer recommend it for animal bites or scratches. And the reason for that is because of what ensued after that. Before I finish that part of my story, I want to back up just a little bit. <clears throat> I had been researching for about a year um, on heavy metal toxicity and how to detox the body from that. I did finish writing the protocol, and my husband and I were putting ourselves through the protocol before I began to share it with anyone or uh, whatever. Anyway, uh, part of that protocol involves the use of large amounts of ascorbate, uh, vitamin C, the buffered form of vitamin C. And uh, so my husband and I were on this detox uh, before the incident with the, the cat happened. I guess we started the detox about two or three days before that. And I was taking roughly, I don't know, 15 to 20 grams of vitamin C every day, which is it's a pretty good dose. And uh, so that's, that's that backdrop that I wanted to put in your mind before I continue. So we're taking this ascorbate, doing this heavy metal detox. Then the cat scratched me. And about a week later, um, I started noticing that my jaws were tight. And my jaws got so tight, they got to the point that I could hardly open my mouth enough to get a spoon in my mouth. Maybe by now some of you who are in the medical profession, your gears are starting to turn. 
Um, it had been 32 years since I'd had a, uh, a tetanus booster. So I called um, our family doctor, is a friend of ours, sweet Dr. Seely. Uh, I love her to pieces. I called, or actually I emailed her and I told her my symptoms and I said, could this be tetanus? And she messaged me back later, but before she did, I, I called another friend of mine who's also a physician. I worked with him down at Uchi Pines, Dr. David Miller. And he agreed with Dr. Seeley that I really needed to go to the emergency room. And so I did. I went to the emergency room over in Somerset. They diagnosed me with cat scratch fever. I guess I did have one symptom of that. I had the cat scratch on my hand, but really nothing else lined up. So they wanted me to take antibiotics and anti-inflammatories and stuff, and, and I complied for a while. After I went to the emergency room the first time and suspected that this was tetanus, I did some research and I found out that vitamin C, ascorbate, prevents tetanus from running its full course. And so I just praise God that he had us taken that heavy metal detox when all this happened. God is so good. If you're interested in the heavy metal detox, just contact me and I'll be happy to talk to you about it. I guess it was about the time that I decided the antibiotics left too nasty of a taste in my mouth and I wasn't going to take them anymore. But my husband and I actually finished the detox protocol that we were doing. And so my ascorbate level intake went down from 15 to 20 grams a day to, I took one teaspoon, I think that's about four grams a day, which I pretty much take every day. And so um, some of my symptoms started getting worse again you know, with my jaw and, and everything. And so uh, <clears throat> we were just about to go up to Bismarck to visit Kalen's family. So I contacted Dr. Seeley again and I said, here's my symptoms. I'm going to Bismarck. We're leaving tomorrow. Well, she called me almost right away when I shared with her what my symptoms were and stuff. And she was very alarmed. And so um, she sent me to the emergency room up in Danville, Kentucky, where I was supposed to get the uh, antitoxin, which is a human immunoglobulin, to help my body fight this, because she believed that I had tetanus. At the hospital in Danville, they didn't believe me. In fact, both hospitals, both Somerset and Danville, uh, charted that there was no sign of, I think you pronounce it, trismus, which is the tight jaw. That was not true, uh, because as I said, I could barely get my mouth open enough to get a spoon in to eat. And so, anyway, I'm, I'm sure these are, are good hospitals. It's just what I heard in both hospitals was tetanus does not occur in the United States. And so that's where the what goes around comes around hit me. And just like I didn't believe that lady because she didn't look like a textbook evolving MI, and I didn't believe her thought she wasn't being honest. Now, I'm getting it back now because both of these hospitals, I didn't come in with my back arched and my tooth clenched and so they didn't believe me, you know, and I understand that. It didn't look typical. But I thank God for um, my friends, Dr. Seeley and Dr. Miller, who have uh, been persistent with this. And so I got the... Uh, the antitoxin, the human immunoglobulin, and we left the next day to fly up to Bismarck. And the first night in Bismarck, in the middle of the night, my husband and I were asleep and I just sat straight up in bed from a dead sleep just gasping for air. And that experience continued the entire almost two weeks, I guess 12 days that we were up there. Particularly at night I would have trouble breathing. And uh, so much so that I would just gasp. And so um, when we got back, I called Dr. Celia, asked her if she wanted to see me, and she did. And so I made an appointment, went back to her office. 
shortly after we got back, one of our border collies gifted us with eight of these little darlings. And uh, just the other night, we got 12 from our other female border collie, so I'm pretty busy right now. But after we got back, I went to uh, Dr. Seeley's office, and I shared with her the experience of my shortness of breath. And uh, she was quite concerned and ordered a oxygen saturation monitor for me to wear overnight. Come to find out, my oxygen saturation had dropped down, I guess, in the 70s. And uh, she had a chest x-ray and some stuff done. And, and it, it, the chest x-ray showed up CO, mild COPD, which she said was probably just from the coughing because I had, when we got back from Dakota, I had a head cold. And uh, just so far off schedule and stuff. So um, that kind of has started this whole thing where we realized that the tetanus has damaged the nerves in my intercostal muscles to the point that now at night when I lay down I, I, I have to sleep with my head elevated because I can't breathe. I'm on oxygen at night and sometimes during the day. And uh, that will heal. The, the nerves will regenerate <coughs> excuse me, themselves. And uh, Everything will be okay. But there's a lesson in all of this. I guess the biggest lesson for me in all of this is things are not always as they appear. You know, it's helped me to be more sensitive to other people and what they're telling me of how they feel. It's helped me to realize that, you know, sometimes Kaylin and I both, my husband and I both, are workaholics and uh, it's hard for us to slow down. And so we, uh, this experience along with, you know, some injuries this summer and surgery on my hand, Kaylin had surgery on his feet, has helped us both to realize that the laborers are few, <laughs> and if those of us who are involved in ministry work ourselves to death, what good is it? So I guess my appeal is to those of you who are laymen and believe in the soon coming of Christ, what are you doing? What are you doing to help those who are in ministry to lift the burdens? What are you doing for the salvation of souls? What are you doing to hasten the coming of Christ, as it says in 2 Peter 3.12, that we can do? This has been a real wake-up call for me. I'm usually very strong, very capable. Um, lots of endurance. I could just go all day. I can't do that now. I, I dug... I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 feet of sweet potatoes this morning and I was done for. And Jesus said, come apart and rest. He doesn't expect us to kill ourselves. That's why we canceled our camp meeting this September. Because it was just too much, you know. It was hard for me to do. I didn't want to cancel it. I wanted to, it to be a blessing to people and to have people come. and. You know, this little farm is beautiful. I mean, it has so much to offer here. It's it's a wonderful place for people to come and, and enjoy and rest and fellowship. But Kaylin and I have just been so busy trying to minister to people, to others, that we've not taken time to really minister to ourselves. And, and ourselves to go to camp meetings and, and enjoy them. And so... Um, Closure for Jesus ministry will go forward. Um, we're working on the web page right now. It, it, we had some problems with it for about the last year. We've been having problems with it, but we are going to keep it. I want to slow down so that I can do more writing and uh, study. You know, I have Bible studies with people. Kaylin does too, and, and uh, we do classes. And, and now the DoTerra business that we started to try to help support the ministry. 
so we're, we're still active but um, I, I can't do what I used to could do you know we're both in our mid 50s now I guess I'm still in my early 50s but anyway we're in our 50s so we just want to be as useful as we can to the Lord and to others and so my appeal is for those of you who are younger and uh, more capable and even those of you who are older do your part try to win souls for the Savior share the health message um, educate yourself um, I believe that now that we're we're getting older that our our strength is more needed in the line of education than anything else and so at any rate I thank you for your support I thank you for watching our videos and for those of you who follow us on Facebook I appreciate it I appreciate all of you and uh, thank you for your prayers those of you who did know what was going on with me and uh, I guess we'll see you on the next video. It'll probably be about puppies. Take care.